All right, YouTube, what's going on? Tonight we're looking at a whole big old pile of knives. No, just kidding. We're actually going to be focusing on one, but these are all here for comparison purposes. So, But the uh, knife we're looking at here is the Chavez JB Stout Megalodon 325. This is a mid-tech knife uh, and a collaboration between Ramon Chavez and JB Stout. So, the Megalodon is actually a stout fixed blade that has this exact, I don't exact, but very, very similar blade profile. And uh, they did a collaboration mid tech there to uh, make a folder out of it, which is pretty stinking awesome, I think. I've always kind of loved this design ever since I saw it and wanted to pick one up. Now, it's deceptively small, um, it, it looks larger in pictures. And I actually love the size, but if you, just to give you an idea, uh, here's a Sabenza, large Sabenza, 25. You can see that the Sabenza is quite a bit bigger knife than the southern, or than the uh, the southern, the Chavez. So it's actually uh, kind of a smaller knife, um, not as small as like a small Sabenza. Another comparison here. So you can see it's quite a bit. It's bigger than that, but it's kind of so it's kind of in between the small and the large Sabenza. It is a three and a quarter inch blade. That's what the 325 stands for. Is the uh, three and a quarter inch blade, titanium frame lock, on bearings, very smooth, very smooth. I mean, you can flick it out there, and that's actually the interesting thing about the knife is that the detent is strong on it, so it's not a real like. I mean, you can see here, it's not really designed to be used as a thumb opener because of that that strong detent. Let me just kind of demonstrate this for you. Get going all that kind of sucks it in. So it's actually I think designed to be middle finger flipped. You can also do kind of a this is going to be kind of awkward to do that. It's more middle finger. Sometimes I'll use two fingers here and kind of open it like that but on camera it looks a little slower than it is but Again, thumb stud, or not thumb stud, thumb opening, because of the where the, the pocket clip is and with the lock bar, you're putting pressure on it, and it's got a little bit stronger of a detent, so it's harder to open that way. So, But the middle finger flick is perfect for this knife, so that's kind of the chosen deployment method on that. It's got a stonewashed titanium frame. There is no lock bar insert on this, so it does get a little bit of a lock stick, but not bad. Um, the nice thing about it is it's just buttery smooth. The fit and finish is really well, really good on it. Um, and it's just a really, overall, a really great knife, and I'm actually really happy with it. Sorry. It's got a sculpted titanium clip, which actually flows really well with the lines of the knife. And you can see that the screws are kind of hidden down in there, which is kind of nice. Actually, even cooler is, I just noticed this, the pocket clip actually attaches inside the frame. Right there. Come on, focus for me. There we go. So that's where the clip actually um, attaches on right here. So you don't have those external you know, screw holes kind of sticking out. That's a nice little custom touch there, I think. Does have Torx hardware, the uh, Torx pivot. And it is a pretty, I mean, it's perfectly centered. Pretty stout knife still. I mean, thickness comparison. Let's, uh, well, we'll just use the Sabenza again. There it is, side to side, next to a Sabenza. And you can see it's a little bit thicker in the handle. Not too thick. My one complaint about the Chavez Redunchion mid tech was that it's uh it was just too thick it was just a big old brick this i don't know if it's because it's a smaller overall um fingerprint not i mean excuse me fingerprint footprint of the knife that it's uh you know a little bit easier to deal with it's not quite as thick it does have pretty substantially thick blade stock um it's 0.187 inches so almost 0.2 inches and it is s35 vn um with a Kind of a hybrid draw point slash tanto grind. It's got your filler blood groove right here, which is really nice. Oh, it's very, very smooth. You 
can see there I caught it right on my thumbnail or else it would have got me but the handle length is 4.25 inches so it's a, a really good size knife uh, 0.15 inches thick and it weighs in about four and a half ounces so it's a really good size for EDC um, I actually just love this size knife because it's like I said just smaller than a, a large Sabenza not much but just smaller in handle um, let's look at the uh, Tad Dauntless here. Another great knife. Great EDC size. Very similar in size. It's almost the identical blade shape, or not blade shape, but blade length. The handles on this one's a little bit longer. And we'll do the Southern Tulk, which is quite a bit bigger. I haven't done a video on this one, y'all. I probably will. It actually may even come out before this one. We'll see. Quite a bit longer knife on this on the Southern. So Really dig the Chavez. It's a great size. Um, just a great overall knife. Very well put together. Great collaboration from two really um, great custom makers, and I'm a big fan of both of their works. So it's just it's just a great size. Really dig it. So nice, comfortable in the reverse grip as well. You can see I have medium hands. Got plenty of knife to spare. Not too much. Um, just really dig it. Awesome. Well done. Well done on this one, guys. Uh, very impressed. So cost-wise on these, you're going to pay right around 5 for them. I actually got a really good deal on this one. I paid $3.99, um, which I kind of why I've been holding off on it is I didn't want to pay that. Technically, if you if you order it right from Ramon um, from his site, it's $4.75. But um, typically on the secondary market, you're looking more at $4.99 to $5.50 even from what I've seen. So when I saw one come up for that price, I had to try and grab it. And I'm really glad I did. It's a it's a great knife. I'm kind of on a mid-tech kick lately. You can see here in this in this uh, messy desk of knives here, we'll call it. Quite a few mid-tech knives. The Crying Shard, which I did a video on. The Southern Tulk. The... Dauntless by Tad. It's the MK4. That's the newest one. Then you got your Sabenzas, which are not mid techs, but they are the measuring stick of all knives, in my opinion. Especially titanium frame lock knives. So, and we got a couple of productions back here the Kaiser and the Custom Knives Factory, Deboya, which I'll be doing a video on that, I think, too, when I get time. But I've been on a kick lately with, with mid techs and you know, it's nice to be able to get a Chavez, a Southern, a Tom Crine knife, but not have to pay the uh, you know full custom price. The Dauntless, I'm not sure with that. <clears throat> I would consider it to be a mid-tech just because it's uh, not made by Daunt by Tad. It's actually... What is that? Weird stuff on the clip there. It's actually made um, by someone, and they're not really divulging who produces the knife for them but it's definitely uh, you know, designed by them you know so I don't know if you call it mid-tech or production or kind of in the gray area in my opinion but it's a, another solid offering um, really dig it so kind of the you know it's nice to support these makers and, and get something and you know a lot of times like they'll go the mid-tech route or they'll go like the Laconico route here where they get a company like Kaiser that produces a uh, production knife version of their one of their designs which ultimately we all went on that because these are a lot less expensive <laughs> but sometimes they don't do that and they just do the mid text to make their knives a little bit more their designs more readily available um, Southern actually calls this part of his performance series but it is a mid tech um, as well so I kind of failed on flip on that one detent's not quite as strong on that one but Alright guys, so I mean, like again, this was more about the Chavez, but kind of comparing some other mid-techs lately, and there's, there's, I think of, of all these mid-techs, this is my favorite. Um, it's got probably one of the best actions, it's very well put together, um, just a good size, and, you know, really impressed with it, so if you've been on the fence about the Chavez Megalodon, you know, if you want to get one, I highly recommend it. Keep an eye out on the secondary market. Um, I'll tell you, you shouldn't be paying over five for these. If you can get one direct from Ramon for four seventy-five, um, you're paying over that just because it's you know they're not available at the moment from him. Um, but you know, keep an eye on the secondary. There's some good deals to be had, and 
this is one of them. Really stoked about the Chavez Stout collaboration here, the Megalodon. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I may, like I said, do another one on the Tulk and maybe one on the Dauntless. Did one on the Crying Shard already. So, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, you know, hope you guys don't mind the new kind of laid back approach to the videos. Like I said, don't have a lot of time to put a lot of effort into, you know, editing them and, you know, making them fancy and all that stuff like I used to. And so you kind of get what you get now, but I uh, wanted to continue to make videos, kind of just talk about knives and, you know, what, what's out there now and what's out there new and, you know, what's, what's, uh, what's going on. <laughs> Alright guys, it's late and I'm making this video pretty late on a Saturday night, so I apologize for the rambling. Take a look at uh, the uh, Chavez Stout again in little macro shots here in high definition. Middle finger. It's a fun one to play with. It's fun to deploy. I like that. I always like the Spidey, the Spyderco, you know, middle finger flick. And you can definitely do that with this. Lock is a titch sticky, but not... Um, nothing bad, and it's pretty easily remedied, so. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.